Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spells Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today, oh man, oh, everybody get the tissues out. We've just done episode 11 of Andor. Um, let's just dive straight into it. We've got Catherine here. We've just got the, the core team today, just the cool kids. Hi, Catherine. How are you going? I'm a bit sad. It is a bit sad. I'm very sad. Almost as sad that this is actually our second attempt at recording because... <laughs> We started recording and then Matt Mole, who's not on this episode's voice, started playing in my headphones and I lost my mind. Some track from the last time I edited it started automatically playing and I'm going, oh, is he just trying? Because he was just messaging me and I thought, oh, maybe he's just, you know, he's found the time and he's just going to jump into the recording. He's just like, I'm here, like such a thing that he would do, but he's not here. So I was like, I, I freaked out for a second. So we had to restart the recording, <laughs> but we're here now. So it's just Catherine and me, t- me today. But I mean, that's enough to process, really. Oh, did, did you get your two episodes in, Catherine, or are you just you, not quite? Not, not quite, because I um, you know, watched it, and then by about seven thirty-five, I'd finish, and I you know, go and get a drink, pace around you know, the house a little some- bit. Pace around the house, watch some train videos to calm down, and then I um, go back to watch. And I got most of the way through the second watch. Yeah. Pretty good effort. Although, oh, God, B2, it breaks. Like that first time through, I just gasped that Marva was gone like Oh my god! I have to say, I, I'm still first, can't quite believe it. First, I think genuine criticism that I've got of this show is that they killed Fiona Shaw off screen. It seems a little bit weird, and even the episode before, it felt like maybe she couldn't do any more days of shooting or something that they've just kind of had to. I mean, the last episode was just like, oh, you know, she's unwell. She's not taking her meds, and did it. like maybe there's a maybe there's an about turn in the last thing. Like she's not dead, and she's going to come out, and she's just like opens a jacket full of explosives and blows everybody <laughs> up. Like you know, I wouldn't put it past her, and I hope that's something that happens. But it just seems weird that they've just killed her off screen, just like that. Like I know it's yeah, it- yeah. I I agree that watching it the first time I. And even the second time, I was thinking, you know, maybe she's not. Maybe this is some kind of setup because they're trying to get B two emo out of the way. Um, you know, trying to get him out of the way so that something can happen from the house. But I don't, I don't know. You can't like it's just the show's so good that. The twist is logical, but even the logical thing playing out is logical because they just do it well. You know what I mean? Like, I just like, well, it yeah. makes sense because they're just doing it this way. Um, and then even yeah. if they, and even if they did a twist in it, like, well, if they they'll do it well, so it'll make sense as well. And I don't know if you noticed, but you know, when we see B two emo, he's got like a cup of tea on his head, yeah, and you think that's probably marva leaving that on his on his head and he's just waiting for her to come pick it back up again yeah she just left her yorkshire gold sitting there yeah yeah i oh. i don't know i just i it just seems weird that she's so good and she just had all this build up about like i'm going to kick against the pricks i'm a rebel now i'm going to do all of this that it's just i mean i know she's going to yeah, but, work through the tunnels and oh. But at the same time, it could just be yeah, she's a brick now. Like she's literally a brick. Like, but even that seems like that's a something. Um, I mean, we talked about last week when when Cassian got off, you know, got 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 off the the out of the jail. We sort of said, well, it feels like that it's all going to go down on Ferrix, and they're all, you know what's going to get everybody yeah. to convene. And you know, I said or maybe Cassian just shows up and basically is like, well, I'm here, come and get me. Um, but now it seems to be the impetus is like, well, Marva's dead. Cassian's going to be there. The rebels have already made their moves. Val's already making her move there. Um, Cinta's already there. The ISB are getting ready to go there. Um, feels like it's all going to go down in the next episode. 
he had Cyril's on his way there. <laughs> Cyril's on his way. Cyril's oh. on his way. He- Cyril's going to stuff it all up, isn't he? For someone. Uh, something. I, it's just the thing is like it's just so beautifully set up now. Like it, it was, it was quite an f- interesting episode because it was a very transitionally episode, but it did have a lot of. You know, it did answer a bunch of stuff. You know, they got, <laughs> they're like hanging off the side of that cliff to start with. I'm like, no one else is getting out of that, off that planet. They're, Melchie and him were the only two guys, I reckon, who made it out of there. Who knows? Yeah, yeah like that's just, that's heartbreaking as well. That, yeah, you think the likelihood is very low of, of people getting off. Um, So... <laughs> How did that exactly play out? I've only watched it once. I'll have to go back and watch it with the subtitles. I know you do subtitles on the second watch, don't you? Usually, Catherine, or uh, sometimes yeah. the first or second yeah. watch. Um, yeah. So they like they get they go up the hill, they spot the the the, the, the quad jumper. Um, yeah. Nice little throwback to Force Awakens or throw forward or whatever you want to do. And they're like, all right, no, she's just like, I'm making a run for it. Let's go. Cassian's in tow. And there's these like two random sort of dudes there, and they get caught in the in the sticky gooey trap, which I thought was quite cool. Oh, the trap was cool. And um, they basically kind of talk the way out, or they they convince them that they're on the run from the Empire, and it's kind of like, well, we hate the Empire, so we'll help you out. Yeah, that was pretty much it. That yeah, um, yeah, those two dudes don't like the Empire, so they. You know, Cassian and Mel- Melchie don't like the Empire. So, yeah, we'll set you free. And where do you want to go, mate? Give some bros a ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was quite yeah. cool. Because they did mention they're just like, I think they were locals. They're just like, well, the Empire's here. They went and ruined all our water by building their big freaking facilities here. So it's just yeah. another indigenous group of people who've been screwed over by the Empire moving in. Yeah. Yeah, so it was interesting. I'll, yeah, I have to rewatch that scene with subtitles on because... You only get sort of every few words, really. Mm. Um, I was struggling a little bit. Cool but design, I think though. I've never time, seen those aliens before. Yeah, like they they look like Star Wars aliens. I can't describe that, mm. but they look like Star Wars aliens as opposed to like Star Trek aliens. So they look very Star wars There was a very big Star Wars y stuff in this episode. Like it got it got yeah. quite I don't know we've been in sort of the prison for the last two episodes. Um but you know we had a good dose of aliens, we got a good dose of spaceships, we got some Imperial fighters, we got some t- TIE fighters, we got a lot of that kind of biz um going on. But yeah, so Cassian and Melshi they managed to get off they managed to get off planet and then Cassian goes back to the holiday thing, goes, gets his stuff. There it is, just waiting for him in the shower. <laughs> I love how those people are just like asleep in bed. He just sneaks in. <laughs> yeah, but the manifesto's there. That was confirmation the manifesto is in Cassian's and there was a, box. I mean, he his, even touches it. Private and it box. Of, he, he even sort of touches it <laughs> and it comes to life. And yeah, Was that um, yeah. Nemec's voice that came out of it? I think so. I'll probably be wrong on that, but um, yeah, I'd say so. That it's you know his transcription of it. So I hope we hear little quotes from Nemec. <laughs> it's funny if it's like some of it's his manifesto. It's other stuff is just like voice messages to himself. He's like, uh, idea for a TV show: uh, a funny cat and a funny dog share a house together and uh, get up to IG. He's like, oh, idea for a song: like mm, ch, boom, boom, ch, boom, boom. Yeah, you know, he's just got all these other like <laughs> eggs and collect meat yep. and you know steal from the empire. Um, <laughs> So yeah, Cassian's girlfriend or whoever he, that lady he left on on the planet, she didn't obviously didn't find the shower thing. She just was like, "Well, he's just done a cut and run." Yeah, buddy, men. Um, <laughs> God, a lot, we did. We, we kind of caught up with everybody, didn't we? Really, this episode, everybody got a little look in. I don't think there was anybody yes. that we really missed. Uh, no, I mean Deirdre, we only saw via the um, communication screen, mm. but yeah, we. We caught up with everyone. 
Even briefly, yeah. So that shot of Deirdre from the trailer where she's flanked by the Death Troopers and she's in a little like black hat and stuff like that. That Still must be in the seen finale. No, I was so sure yep. that that was going to be the, in this episode that I was I preemptively put that as the cover art for this week's episode, <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, it's not in here. I'm gonna have to take it out. I'll I'll, I'll put something else in. I think it's going to be a picture of well, it's going to be BD now. I think you know after the Oscar winning oh. performance of that little guy. Um, I'm just trying to sort of lay lay everything out in sort of order of what we saw. Um, so yeah, we started on Ferrix, um, where it's Bosco. Is he's that his sort of name? like his best mate kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Who's um, helping the daughters Ferrix sort of you know close down um, Marva's house and take her out, and he seems like almost like a chief mourner mm. almost, and he'll be taking care of B two Emo. Um, oh my goodness, like your heart just broke for B2 Emo. Like he's he's just like a little dog or a little cat who whose owner's passed away and doesn't know what's happened. It's just heartbreaking. Yeah, there was you know, and he's even got his little dog bed. I mean, I come know. on. And then he just goes, Oh, can you just stay tonight? And he even like wheels up just like I'll, I'll get you a drink. Like I'll, I'll, I'll do something for you. Like here, you know, yeah. let's, let's just pretend that it's <laughs> that you're here. Can, here's her. Can you go put her dress on? I'm sure they probably left her nighty in the cupboard. Could you just pop her nighty on tonight? Oh. Well, uh, yeah, it was, it was very touching. I think that's. Yeah. I mean, that's up there with the Star Wars droid performances. That's like, that's sort of R two oh. devil, R two D two level performance stuff going on there. Yeah, like it's just heartbreaking, and he just wants a little hug or a little head pat you know and he just wants to cuddle you know to feel better because he's lonely oh my god like <laughs> oh it's just amazing though that we get the most heartbreaking performances out of like b2 emo and r2d2 who are the most distant from like human mm. shape and yet oh they Break our hearts. I mean, Keishu is so as well. So, yeah. Good Lord. Um, oh. So, yeah. So, Belshi and, and, and Cassian get off the planet. They get to the, they get to the, but they didn't spend stacks of time with these guys in this episode. So, they, they got to the the shower and got the gear and we'll come back mm-hmm. to them. But then we basically, we get your own Ferrix. We check in with Bix. Bix is still in custody of the Empire and she's having a rough time. She's. Oh. She's been through She's the ringer. She's in terrible shape. Um, yeah. And they look like they're not quite done with her yet. They're, they're basically prying inf- information about um, not Kreef Cargo. I always get those names mixed up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Krieger. Krieger. And uh, they see, yeah. we, see, we see a little bit of – not what I was expecting. We see a picture of him sort of on the hologram thing. And yeah. I don't know because they're kind of like, do you know him? Is this the guy? It, it, it almost looks like she says yes or it kind of implies that she she just sort of – she definitely doesn't say no. I I read that as she wished she could say yes. But then she that, knows you know, it's not and she's like, if they lie, if I lie, they're just going to get out of me anyway. Yeah. You know, it's it's not him and because it's not him, though, you know, because she says no, they might torture me again to confirm that. It's not him. If I say yes, they'll... You know, won't believe me. You know, she wants to say yes, but yeah. it's not true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So she's been sort of holed up there that whole time. She's having a really rough time of it. Um, and then we sort of check in with Cinta, who's basically working the bar now. And the stupid Imperial spy is just like <laughs> sitting in the bar looking across the road. He's not exactly yeah. being particularly subtle. I think they all kind of know who he is and just like, well, just let him. Sit there. I mean, who really cares? You know, because the first time I saw him there, I was like, oh, I hope Cinta knows he's a spy. But, you know, with him just sitting there, it's like, oh, yeah, you're a spy, mate. Yeah. yeah. So Cinta's smart enough to figure out oh, the, the bloke who's always sitting there. Across the road at the, from house. the place of interest. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of takes one to know one. I'm yeah, watching you she's... watch over me, and I've got the greatest view from here. I was complimented on my musical references last week. 
that I was making on things I think went over most everybody else's heads. But there was a few, few uh, you know, deep cut music fans who, who got some of those. So, um, yeah, and then we catch up with Val. So Val got, <laughs> Val's just like, I'm just going to walk into the store and start talking, start talking spy stuff. It doesn't really matter. Clay is, you know, and she's sort of like trying to shimmy her across the room, like get her back to the, back to the thing, yeah. and uh, do the fake showing her around. Yeah. the Val's just the like, store I just want to talk floor. about spy stuff. She's like, hmm, I don't know what product you're you're referring to here. Are you <laughs> looking at a? I thought that that was quite oh. funny. Um, and then uh, she goes over and visits Mon Mothma, whose daughters joined youth group by the looks of things, or. Yep. Yep. I'd say youth group is a good way of calling it. (laughs) Just like that reminds me of people like you in 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 school, and good for them, I guess. You know, if that's what you're into, that's what you're into. But I mean, is it implied that I had a lot of Friday nights at various youth groups? Ah, there you go. Growing up, you're like, when are we getting to the talk about Doctor Who or something that I'm interested in? (laughs) (laughs) Well, she seems pretty into it. Mon Mothma's daughter. It's kind of weird because she's sort of like, does she imply that she's basically somehow backdoored, got her interest in it, so she'll be more amenable to arranged marriage? Or is that too quick? Because she's just like, oh, the so-and-so came over and... and, and- No. Um, Mon Mothma says that she didn't encourage it, Perrin didn't encourage it. Lita basically found the elder on her own, um, that she's the one who's interested in it and... Neither Mon Mothma or Perrin encouraged it or like it that much, you know. I think Mon Mothma, I didn't quite catch this. This is where I should have had the captions. Um, I think Mon Mothma said something on the lines of um, that she and Perrin are of the same mind about this one. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> well, nice that they can agree on something. <laughs> nice that they yeah. can agree on something. Like, oh, we just heard that she'd be sort of listening to rock and roll and smoking in the, in the corridor or something. And um, I don't know. I just well, thought I just how... thought it was a bit weird that you know it seemed that arranged marriage was part of that is encouraged in that religion as well, and it just seemed that all of a sudden she became amenable to the religion all of a sudden when it's convenient for Mon Mothma to have to get it sell arranged marriage to her. Well. You know, what um, Lita was wearing during that meeting, she was wearing, you know, in the first episode or something when we met her, you know, at the, at the breakfast table when she was wanting to go to school or to a meeting or something and Mon Mothma wanted to take her and she's like, no. Uh, so she's been so interested she's been, for a yeah, while. Right, okay. So maybe yeah, that's so, even why yeah. she's more worried because she's just like actually she caught, she, she catches wind of it. She'll just yeah. she'll just go along with it rather than being like, "Hey, would you like to meet this boy?" And she's just like, "F you, mum, and your stupid, you know, wackadoo home religion stuff. I'm not doing that." And you're like rock and roll, whatever. Um, yeah. So that actually that's yeah. probably true. So that's why she's more worried. She's like, "Yeah, given the chance, if something offers it yeah. up, she might be like down for it." So you know, at the end when, um, because they're talking about the the trouble that Mon Moth is in and that the way out, the price she'll have to pay, uh, yeah, it's Lita and Lita looks like, yeah, she would go for it. Yeah, which actually makes it worse because it's like it's even more tempting. It's not like it's a hard sell or she's like, actually, I could solve this problem but at what cost? And then, you know, I've gone and sort of sold my daughter up the thing, even if she doesn't up the creek, even though if she doesn't realise it yet, and into a shonky family for that matter. Mm. God. Good acting in that bit though too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mon Mothma's just restrained. Oh, so many emotions, but they're all, you know, having to be restrained so that, it's not exposed to leader and and the the youth group. Um, <laughs> they rocking some DC talk or something in there, or one of those. That's the only Christian band reference that I know. <laughs> There's another deep cut. Look, we, we did more than just that. There was it wasn't too far out. You know, uniting church. We we don't go too hardcore. No, no. Um, Enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, hey, there's a whole podcast of stuff in there. We can scratch the surface. You think you know someone. There you go. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's a very fascinating thing now. So it's like, you know, Mon Moth is basically like 
not only is she cornered, let the only way out is one that she really doesn't want to have to go down. She's kind of looking for another solution. And it's kind of weird because yeah. Vela's basically just like, 400,000 credits, huh? Mm. I probably would know where 400,000 credits are, but yeah. um, can't really divulge that, divulge that information right now. And, you know, the fact that things are now harder for Mon Mothma and she could be in more trouble is partly because of Val, because of Aldani that she brought to Luthen. Yep. Yep. Oh, it's, it's all the knock-on effects. It's all a wicked way, wicked web that we weave. It's uh, it's primo stuff, premium television, Catherine, as they say. Oh, so good. It's such good television. Uh, so where do we go from there? Then we, we catch up with Luthen, who's back over to um, catch up with Saw Guerrera. Some good x wing yep. And two tubes. Some good x wing Yeah, some, good, some big two tube stuff in this. He um, he sort of takes front and center for a little bit of it. So, yeah, so uh, Luthen rocks up. And um, I did kind of like they're just like, oh, he's in a mood right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Dad's in a mood. <laughs> <laughs> His footy team has it won. Just go in there, you know, not try, try not to upset him. Yeah. So Two Tubes has obviously been with him for a while. So it was Two Tubes with with Emphis Nest, wasn't it? Or was it his Oh another species of him? That. Another one of him. Was it specifically him? I don't know. We better ask mm. the uh, the train spotters will know. Um, yeah. Someone will look it up. I'm not going to Google. I'm it right not now. that type of train spotter. No, I know, but I'm just using it as a you know someone. Somebody yeah. will de- absolutely know. Um, oh yeah. <clears throat> I did see um, just on Twitter. I was quickly checking before I came on. Nikki Kumar from Imperial Senate was making a reference to some like crazy, crazy, crazy deep cut reference. He didn't say what it was because he's a good boy. Doesn't spoil things. But it was like yeah. some name of something, and I. I, I didn't resonate with me. I have to. I'm sure somebody will will bring it up later on. I saw someone else to um, that tweeted out about Cantwell, which was the type of um, cruiser that the Imperials had when they encountered. Ah, uh, yeah, with the big dishes um, on it and stuff. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, Luthen's meeting with Saw. It was just fantastic again. <laughs> How I good mean, is? Forrest Whitaker. Two blokes talking in a room. How good is it? I know. He's, it was kind of funny because he's, he's he's like all up for it. It was kind of weird because he's like, oh, he's in a mood. And he comes and he was like, he seemed like he was actually in a pretty good mood. He's just like, all right, we're going to go do this job. We're going to go smash some shit. You know, he'll have my air, air, air support, but I don't want any tactical <laughs> notes. I basically <laughs> want to go in and do it my way. Um, so is that basically why he was there? I, I, he didn't kind of imply – saw, did Saw summon him or did he – I think Saw summoned him to say we want in, basically. Yeah, yeah, because in that in the conversation later with um, Clea, I think through the code it was implied that he, yeah, yeah he went out there because Saw called him, but um, yeah, 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 I think that's what I I understood it to be. Um, yeah, well, I think Saw's moods are. <laughs> Notoriously, a little up, a little judge. down. Everybody's had that boss once yep. in their life, you know, like your best mate for a few minutes, and other times, you, just, you know, keep your distance. Um, yeah, so basically, he's you know, Luther is trying to tell him not to take the job, doesn't want to mm-hmm. tell him why, but you know, Saw's been around the block a few times, he figures out pretty quickly that he's uh, he's got a mole, he's got a mole, and he does, he's gonna blow the cover and and uh, and so on and so forth, and yeah. uh. Talks him around in the end. Yeah. yeah. Better him than me kind of thing. Yeah. But, um, again, in this dialogue, they answered my concern from last week where, you know, Luthen's ready for um, Krieger to be, you know, captured or burnt. I was like, well, can't he lead them back to Luthen using Dr. Grouse or Groost? Yeah. Creepy man. Yeah. Um, but no, they never met yep. and never had direct contact. So Luthen's prepared, yeah, to burn him. <laughs> just Let's like, call yeah. it war. <laughs> yeah, and it's quite funny because, like, of course, um, so I was just like, would you just burn me? You know, if this was me, like the first chance to get, he's like, no, you know who I am, so I can't. I don't have that luxury. Basically, he's like, if you, if you didn't know me, I'd do it. But uh, here I don't. And then. Um, 
you know, he go, he starts talking about all the moles, and he's just like, "Oh yeah, two tubes over there is my mole." <laughs> <laughs> tubes is like, dude, I'm just standing. Yeah, I'm here. right here. I'm just standing here, but, doing nothing. W- what are you doing? Yeah, that was quite clever, and he got him close enough to sort of grab the blaster and uh, change change the tone of the conversation. Um, yeah, so I don't. I, 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 we sort of spoke a few weeks ago about maybe this this job. The hit on the power plant was the culmination thing, but I think it's just a thing that's going to happen in the background now. I don't. I think it's just going to be. Oh, yep, they caught a bunch of killed a bunch of rebels, and that was that, really. Yeah, that it might get mentioned, you know, in the ISB offices, but yeah, it's not something that I think we'll see. No, uh, I mean we'll and talk then about where Tony we go Gilroy next. Tony Gill will prove me wrong. Yeah, <laughs> uh, t- t- Tony Gill, T Gill. Um, where do we end up after that? Yeah, and then we basically get Luthen trying to make a run for it, getting uh, flagged down by the cops in his uh, in his in his ship and uh, pulling a few sweet sweet maneuvers. Basically, Han Solo would be proud of some of those maneuvers. Oh, he's tricked our sheep. Yeah, like the um, countermeasures for the uh, tractor beam. Like the like, basically like the shrapnel. Well, that's a th- I, I think we've ever seen that in Star Wars as basically just like a projectile. Just a projectile. Yeah, I know the sand people shoot with bullets. Yeah, I think that's like the only solid projectile that I can think of in Star Wars. Maybe in the comics or something they've they've alluded to it or mm-hmm. some of the books and stuff. But as far as just like, I'm just going to throw some hard shit at this, <laughs> 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 and, and um, yeah, and break your break your tractor beam, which was quite yeah. cool. I love seeing like that. Cool. There's nothing better than seeing an Imperial officer like after someone's gotten away. It's just like the face <laughs> that they pull, basically. Yeah, where they're just like, oh, crap. Yeah, it's where very satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, you know, amazing to see it hitting the dish and the dish just melting or shredding away. And then the last shot we see, and that's, you know, basically where I – stepped out is the reflection in the glass um in the in the imperial ship as we just see that dish just still just disintegrating it is just gorgeous what's one of the things um that's quite interesting about it and i guess we don't get stacks of it maybe last jedi had a little bit of it of space acting like space you know, like yeah. normally in Star Wars, it's like, well, there's, you know, and there's explosions and there's sound and there's like, you know, and it's like, you know, that's what we like. It's the entertainment, the the way the whiz bang and all that kind of stuff. And this was literally like, oh, this thing got hit and it didn't explode. It just got shredded and kind of fell apart in space like it normally would. Like I kind of think, well, you know, like Leia kind of floating in space at the in yeah. The Last Jedi. And you're like, oh, yeah, she's actually, in, people are in space and that's kind of what space does. And you don't really get a lot of that in Star Wars. And that was a very just like, oh, yeah, that's what it would do. It would kind of just drift away. It didn't just like go, like explode. It's far more like um, the show The Expanse than what we're used to in Star Wars. Oh, just like most space yeah. shows. You know, yeah. Just like Gravity or like a movie like that or like Interstellar or something where it's like space behaving like space as opposed to space acting, you know, being cool the way we like it. <laughs> Talking of cool, lasers out the side of your sheep. Oh, like the the, the long, like the, like the yeah. beam laser. Yeah, I know. Just when you think you've seen it all, very cool. Oh. Some tricks on that ship. That yeah, the Millennium Falcon. I mean, that's what it's kind of like the Millennium Falcon, but with money. <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. like Han kind of stumbles his way with, with, with maneuvers and luck and, and, you know, sort of tacked together stuff. And Luthen's just kind of like, I've just got this thing tricked out with all the best, all the best gadgets for such a situation like this. Like, who's his cue? Who's the person who's built all his stuff? Because he has magnificent stuff. Where does he get those wonderful toys? Um, <laughs> I mean, it does show that he. he the walls are closing in. You know what I mean? Like he hasn't been able to just kind of get around with impunity before. Like he's he's having a few cl- close shaves. Yeah. And now you think uh, that ship with admittedly um, another transpo- transponder signal 
but now that's logged it's compromised know, in the ship. imperial records. Yeah. 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 Um, and the conversation that he has after he sort of gets away with Claire, where they're sort of, you know, saying without saying he's talking about the, you know, the peace and did we get the peace and da 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 da. Like he's talking about Andor, isn't he? That basically the peace has yeah. come back. But it does imply that he knows that Andor, like he wanted Andor dead as well. Or at least yes. he wants him. Does he want him dead? Or he's just like, we need to at least find where he is. Yeah, he wants him scooped up at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. So whether Clay is just like, hey, look, in my mind, that just means <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> um, or whether he means something different. I mean, maybe we'll find that out and maybe when push comes to shove. But I mean, uh, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll talk about what's going to happen next. We'll, let's just close this out. And then we um, we kind of come back where we started. Cassian's on the planet. He's got his bag of goodies back. He's gone and stepped in on the sleeping car, well, snuck out, and um, there's just a nice... I just like that Melshi just had, like, his sort of beach shirt on, looking out over the horizon, sort of breathing it in. And then they and they separate, which was actually really surprising. I, I, I suppose for the purpose of the show it makes sense, but... Yeah, I would have thought that they'd stay together. So Cassian, in the meantime, has made the call back to Ferrix through the pay, pay phone, mm-hmm. um, hasn't done visuals, and he wants the message passed on to Marva that he's, you know, okay and, he's, and you know, he said, oh, tell her she'd be proud of me. Mm. Like, Because he, 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 <laughs> he fought the man, you know, he didn't run, he, he fought the man and he beat the man and, yeah. He, yeah, he stood up against the empire which is what she wanted and took them down uh, and and yeah she'll never know oh, god unless yeah, then, um, she's making a death unless, unless for some yes. reason fiona shaw is for, maybe she got covid or something i can't i can't fathom why she's just done all of this off screen but anyway anyway yeah um but yeah cassian and melshi part ways which I agree I was a little bit surprised about I thought the two of them would be together for a while and to join up with the rebellion basically together yeah um I think for the and I don't think we even have confirmation that Cassian's told Melshi his real name I'm just sort of assumed he has in the meantime I mean maybe there's more deniability I mean, I, I yeah. think for the purposes of the show, it kind of makes sense because it's Cassian's story. He needs to close this out alone. Like, he's got to do this alone. Like, it'd be weird if, M- if Melshi was just there the whole way with him yeah. on this. And, you know, and I think if yeah. Melshi's going out to fulfill his purpose of, like, we're going to tell people about, you know, I'm going to tell people that he can quite easily end up with a rebellion on his own steam now if he's basically like a guy who's telling it like it is telling people about what the Empire is really up to, that you would think that somebody who's got a, a re- rebellion, you know, he would gravitate towards that, whether through just being a guy who's seen some stuff and wants to hear, tell stories or whether the the rebels are like, hey, we need you to give us, you know, tell us what you know. Yeah. Um, so we might, we might get a nice... He might turn up next week, but we might get a lovely reunion in Season 2. Yeah. I, I think we'll see him in Season 2 at the very least because... Yeah, you'd reintroduce him yeah. because obviously the two of them have a very good friendship now and you need some explanation of, well, I do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. I mean, it'll be like an Ocean's Eleven bringing the team back together, you know. They'll walk, you know, it's that whole thing in Rick and Morty where they parody and they walk in and he's like, Melshi, he's like, Cassian Andor, you son of a bitch, I'm in. You know, it'll it'll, it'll be a bit of that. Um, is is Cassian just going to be eating the whole time like Brad Pitt in that movie? Well, he can be, you know, Clo- he could be Clooney or he can be Brad. You can you can put that any way you want. He could be Matt Damon. Clooney, Clooney. There you go. Matt Damon. Sorry, Less I can't troublesome. resist. Um, yeah. So that was just a. Ni- I mean, that was a nice moment and sort of asking, you know, do you think other people got out and stuff? And I hope some did. Maybe. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll find out later on that some some did. Yeah. Uh, whether they're all lucky enough to have to climb up a mountain, run across a beach and happen to find a couple of, you know, amenable guys who'll put them in their ship and get them out of there. 
Yeah, but that moment when Melshi and Cassian sort of looked at each other and it's like, I don't know if anyone else made it out. Mm. You know, it's we're well, just considering like how hard it was for those two guys and yeah, yeah. Um, and then they're sort of yeah. I mean, it's quite sad because Cassian you know finds out that Marva's passed apparently, and um. <laughs> He sort of just comes out, but doesn't wave Melshi down with the weight of that. He's just sort of like, you know, here's a blaster. And does he give him some credits? Hopefully, he gives him a couple. Chucks him, slings him a few credits. Yeah. I hope so. Obviously, he's bought him some new clothes anyway. Hmm. We missed the shopping montage, you know, like Pretty Woman, where they're just like trying on outfits. Okay, Tony Gilroy. I know you're listening because um, Bobby Iger would have put you onto this mm. in the sort of extras at the end of the season. Could you please have the shopping montage of Melshi and Cassian going and trying things on, having a little spinning around to see if the outfit, you know, is awesome? All right? Please and thank you. <laughs> I think they just try to avoid the cops, you know, <laughs> considering how easy it is to get arrested in that town. And he got arrested, you know, he'd, he'd only been there a month earlier and got arrested, you know, just for walking down the street. He might be like, let's just get, get out of our prison gear, get some – Get our money and our blasters and then get the hell out of here as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they were hanging around for long, but, yeah, they, you know, some clothes, some shoes, um, get their stuff and get some ships or transport out of there. So that leaves us with one episode to go, Catherine, of season one. It's a big one. It's a big one. All the pieces are moving into place. They're all been drawn to this one event, to Marva's funeral. Um, yeah. The ISB, you know, Deirdre is just like, let him have it because we'll bring him in. Um, Cyril's caught wind of it. Luthan's caught wind of it. Cassian's caught wind of it. Um, Fel's, Fel knows. Fel knows. Cinta's already there. Um they're all going to be in a, they're all going to be i mean is it going to be a thing where they're all just standing 10 <laughs> feet away from each other in this confined space and it's all going to kick off um it's an interesting one of like what's going to happen like i i don't know whether it really because we sort of spoke about like oh, is that is he going to is casting going to go back and inspire a revolution all that kind of stuff i don't know whether that's necessarily what this this is going to be i, I don't know it's i think Something will happen at Marva's funeral and people of Ferrix are going to be pissed off about the disrespect shown to Marva because it's pretty obvious, you know, what they, you know, think of her because, yeah, her being taken out of the home, there were people lined and they want to close down, was it Rick's Road, which is like the main yeah. street? I mean, it could matter. It'd be a matter of... The ISB think, you know, 20 people are going to turn up to this thing and like thousands of, or hundreds of people turn, you know what I mean, and turn up and then all of a sudden it's a logistics yeah. problem and, you know, Cassian can get in and out a lot easier or, you know, the, the thing of this will be the easy way to get him, it actually doesn't become that. But I, something's, something's going to kick off <laughs> one way or the other. Um, oh, yeah, it's kicking off. Yeah, I, just, I mean, um, it's just like that, that happens. But where do we like? Where do we end up? But we know there's another season. But does is Cassian all in at the rebellion at the end, or is he like? Does he make peace with the rebels who are going to try to kill him? Does he have to prove himself? It's it's all very fascinating. Yeah, I I think he'd be part of the rebellion at the end. Um, I I'm a bit surprised that we haven't had a another flashback to him as a kid um, back on Canary. So whether we'll get something during the finale. Yeah, there's a lot of things, a lot of things happening. Oh, my goodness. It's just... Well, something we haven't really oh. considered, or I hadn't considered, was like, does he actually have to leave Ferrix to be a rebel? Like maybe he says, I am a rebel, but I'm going to do it from here. Like we kick the, maybe they kick the Empire out. And you know he's protected, and he's just like, well, we're gonna, I'm, I'll, I'll be a rebel, but I'm gonna do it on my terms. I'm gonna do it with my people from here. You know, you know where to find me, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and then maybe second season they come. Yeah, maybe the heat comes. On, yeah, they, they come go and, and they're like, him. yeah, would you, you know, we got a nice little base yeah. somewhere. 
Yeah. Oh. If anything happens to B2 Emo, oof. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've still got to close off. Like, we've still got, like, I mean, we've got all of that, that going on, but at the same time, like, we've got the Mon Mothma thread dangling as well. Yeah. And what does that mean? Like, I think there's an episode in Rebels where she basically is just like, I'm out of it. I'm leaving the Senate. You guys all suck. I can't do this anymore. Um, yeah. And basically kind of outs herself as a rebellion leader or whatever she does. And it's just like, all right, I'm, I'm officially on the run now. You know, I'm a... And that comes yeah. later. I mean, Rebels is, what, a year before original Recipe Star Wars or two years? So... It um, starts, yeah, about five years before. So, you know, we're not that far. It, oh, I can't remember exactly when it starts, um, but it ends, yeah, a couple of years before uh, New Hope, before the Battle of Yavin. That's when um, What's-His-Face goes off with um, Thrawn, and space waves. Yeah, yeah. I just wasn't quite sure how close uh, that all. Ezra, that's his name. <laughs> Remember him? Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be sitting here going expect everything to be tied up in a neat little bow by the end of, you know, next week. I think it's no. they'll be dangling threads. They'll be alluding to certain things, but you know, they already know they've got a second season. Um. So you know, get ready for that. You know, maybe not everyone's going to make it out. Who knows? We don't really know who's... Who, is everyone back for season two? Have they confirmed? Do we even know that sort of stuff? Is it worth knowing? I know some stuff, but um, not all stuff. Yeah, some stuff's being implied. Um, yep. I don't know about Time Grappler. Nothing had better happen to Time Grappler. Hang on, what's that? I was at the guy with the bang, bang and the hammers. Yeah, oh, right. bell guy. Okay. Yep. Well, you think he might have some sort of like role in the funeral to play? He might be like he could be doing like the funeral march, the dong dongs or something. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Big Bang was struck. What was it? Every minute during the um, procession for the Queen Elizabeth. Mm. Someone's yeah. got to keep time for all those people marching in step. Yep. I watched that. Well, I didn't watch all of it. I watched en- enough of it. <laughs> After about 20 minutes, I'm like, well, they're still walking down this promenade <laughs> one little step at a time. Yeah, I fast-forwarded through the drive to um, Windsor. <laughs> you fast-forwarded. I was watching it live. I didn't have that luxury. Um, well, I mean... I, I, I went to bed and then watched it again in the morning. <laughs> With the subtitles on, you know, just to do the wrap up. Oh, not the whole Did thing. Did someone do just, a live reaction? You know, Was there a, I wonder if there's a YouTube live reaction to the royal funeral. Oh do you reckon God. somebody did it? That would be long. I'm not going to look at that right now. Yeah. I might fall down a YouTube but, rabbit hole. But, I mean, can we get better than um, Australian news commentators not knowing who Liz Truss was? Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. They probably, I think in return they didn't know who Anthony Albanese was either. Like the British ones, anyway. Um, so, look, a good episode. I mean, look, it's it's Andor. I mean, we had that huge episode last week, so it's definitely you take a breath, and that's pretty standard for this show. Is, is have the have the big event, take a breath, get all the pieces in place. Um, obviously, it's not a three episode arc this time; it's just a two episode arc. But it's followed a very similar thing of just making sure everybody's where they need to be, and. Yep. Um, and get ready for it. Uh, any any other any other closing thoughts on this one? Any uh, anything else oh, you want to throw in uh, that we've missed? So that was a new quarry that we saw this week. We hadn't seen that quarry before. Um, that Andor was climbing. Um, <laughs> quarry watch. So I didn't know we were on quarry watch. Good to know. <laughs> Look, I I may have messaged some you know. English friends today to find out where the quarry yeah. is. Going to do some mountain, find out do a where. mountain climbing. We're going to get a call from you trying to do a selfie on the side of a mountain barefoot. No, <laughs> but I do want to do like and or location, you know, trips. Like I don't think I can get up to the dam where they filmed Aldani because that's a bit hard. Um, the train might go there like 
once a day on weekdays. Mm. So it's a bit hard. Um, but, you know, I want to get to Clevis where they filmed um, Nemos. Um, and I can get to You better get to Barbican other places. in London. That'll be easy enough. Yeah. You better get to Canary Wharf. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure of any other, any other London locations. The um, spaceport was the McLaren Technology Centre, which isn't that far out. It's in Woking. Yep. Um, but that one, you know, I'm not as fast over. Um, guess my priorities. You might uh, need to buy but- a sports car or something to get in on that one too. It might be uh- a... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, it's got another episode to go. Who knows? Who knows? I mean... Maybe they'll maybe by then, you know, now the show's a, a, a hit, there might be like the Andor tour. You might be able to, you know, get on a bus and someone will somebody will drive you around and take you to the to the Andor tour. Um That's the dream. That'd be nice. <laughs> you put some requests in now. Um all right, Catherine. One more eleven down, one to go. One way out. One Ugh. only one only one left. So we'll uh, we'll see if it's just you and me again next week or whether we'll get some rest of the crew on but i think we're going to do a series roundup as well episode so you know we'll review the finale as we will and then we won't really get we'll just review the finale and then i think the week or two after we'll do a round table and we'll bring in whoever wants to come on and we'll we'll do a sort of a wrap on the series as a whole and and um and that'll be and or season done for 2022 does it have to be done? <laughs> Sometimes think you know it's it's you know it's the perfect it's like the young ones two seasons you know faulty towers not you 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 the original office you just go out on a high it's all all killer no filler. Yes, but they had a five year plan. <laughs> well, we could have gotten five seasons of who knows of this show. Maybe there's another. Maybe Tony. Maybe there's Tony. another. Come on, Tony. Twist in the tail. You know you want to. Anything else you want to plug, Catherine? Uh, no, no plans at the moment. But uh, my Twitter, while it's there, Catherine underscore Neen. I haven't made another account yet anywhere. Oh, just wait for the morning. You just log on, and it's just <laughs> Twitter's just gone. <laughs> oh yeah, every morning it's like oh, oh it's it opens. There. there you go. There it is. Well, yes. Um, cool. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks. We've got some good feedback um, the last few weeks. We've got some good jump-in listeners, and thanks to all our friends who've been tweeting and retweeting and mentioning on other podcasts as well, which has been really nice. Um, so continue to do that. And um, hi to yeah. anybody new who's been listening. Hang around. Have a good time. We'll- so I'll say, if Josh won't say it, uh, rate and review. Rate and review. Yeah, don't forget to leave a yep. five-star review. That would be great. Um, yep. Always happy to take the five-star reviews. Even if I'll take a four-star review, really. You can drop one off if you really need to. Um, great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Josh. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.